Good morning, Mr. McGregor. Morning, Mr. Lucas. The first movie I ever saw in the cinema could possibly have been Star Wars Episode Four. And I went to see it with my brother, and we were going to see it mainly because my uncle was in it. My mum's brother played um, Wedge in episodes four, five, and six. Good shot, Red Two. And then we sat down, just excited to see Uncle Dennis. Look at the size of that thing. And then we got Star Wars as well, which blew us completely away. That's good. You've taken your first step into a larger world. You and came with it with such a, um, uh, such a great degree of enthusiasm. Like a kid in the candy. I've been waiting for this for weeks. I've been thinking, every morning I say, I wonder if it's today I'll get to choose. <laughs> We'd never seen anybody with the same commitment that he gave. So we were thrilled. Are you and McGregor, Obi Wan Kenobi? I'm George. I'm responsible for all of this. <laughs> First criteria for casting Obi Wan Kenobi was somebody who was complementary to Alec Guinness, but not just sort of copy it, but create a, an addition to that character. Where are you going, Master? For a drink. Because he is younger, he's in a completely different place, and he's a very active Jedi, so I needed somebody very physical, somebody who was a fantastic actor. No. And who could pick up the mannerisms and the essence of uh, the Alec in his performance. So this was like a dream come true to him, to see the final you know, circle of his, his early life come to, come to grips with playing this great part. It's great, isn't it? God, I used to fantasize about things like this as a kid. Yeah, I am, huh? In the original three, Alec Guinness was only in the first half of the first movie. He cropped up now and again as a shadowy blue guy, but we only saw him for half a film, and, and yet he created this iconic figure that, that I've grown up knowing. You must do what you feel is right, of course. And now to have you and McGregor, just doing the nuances of Alec as, as a young man, the charm and the wit and the eye and, and just the gentility of the guy and the strength. You will be a Jedi, I promise. We see right from the start, from episode one, that Obi-Wan becomes this little boy, Anakin's mentor and master, and the fact that he's the disciplinarian and he's always telling Anakin off, and Anakin's always been cheeky to him, and you know, there is a father-son thing there, which is, which is nice, and I refer to him in the end of the movie, this movie as being like brothers. You know, the first half of this film, you see an incredible bond and a real friendship there, so that there is something important that's lost. It's written in a way to be reminiscent of Alec Guinness, and it's written in a way that he becomes more and more the father figure in the series. Patience. Use the force. Think. So as it goes on, the third film, he's much more like Alec Guinness than he is in the first film. I always watch a lot of Alec Guinness before I start. I have done each time, but this time I got them to make up a looped reel of all his scenes. But in this case, it's quite handy, because I'm that bit closer to him now you know, than I was in episode one. I'm, this is my last shot at making it match up, making it Alec Guinness. Let go your conscious self and act on instinct. It's been more important this time than the others to get a, an Alec Guinness feel and look. But this time we had to kind of match it more physically as well. So um, I have done Photoshop composite where I, I try to take uh, Ewan and turn him into Alec. They have almost identical eyes. They have the same grooves here. The mouths are in exactly the right place. They say this triangle is the most important thing and it defines your character. And on the two people, their characters, it's there, that triangle is exactly the same. So I think my hair is quite like Alec Guinness's and it's, it's no longer a mullet, which, is, which I sported beautifully in episode two which I've now passed on to Hayden. He now carries the mullet flame, you know, through episode three. Is he wearing a big Jedi mullet? Yep. Top man. But the continuity in Alec Guinness's look is absolutely all over the place. That looks like someone else pretending to be Alec Guinness. Yeah. No, it looks like the whole hairpiece is just swiveled. What hairpiece? Not the one. Hairpiece. Alec Guinness didn't wear a hairpiece. Sometimes his hair's here, sometimes it's down here, you know. There's not a great deal of continuity going on there. <laughs> His attempt to try and emulate a great actor who he has an enormous amount of respect for is one thing. But what he's done in the process is he's brought the greatness of that character to himself and his own performance. Hello there. Hello there. 
there is a phenomenon in Star Wars that was built in when I started, which is I was hiring actors uh, sometimes for 10 years, and I was hiring them very young. So I was able to use their maturity over the years as part of the character. In the case of Ewan, he starts out as a Padawan learner, and then he ends up as a very sophisticated Jedi Master. And as he's grown into the part, he's gotten even better at the physical aspects of the character, you know, between the films as they grew older. Cut. Well, that was good. One of the greatest pleasures I get is, is seeing that somebody can do something, even if they don't think they can do it themselves. But I think through doing this, um, he's become way more physical and way more capable uh, than he ever was. And that's one of the main reasons why I do it, is seeing somebody reach their maximum potential and then go on from that. <coughs> that was good. Yeah. yeah. That's another. Good. I think Ewan realizes that he, uh, on this particular set, was one of the older characters in the group, and therefore he was the big brother. He was the one that was sort of controlling the group in some cases because he had the most experience, which is very much in the nature of his character. But he would keep things lively and happy and not let people get too dragged down by the day-to-day -day operations of the movie, which is, you know, what a big brother does. <laughs> what? also contributes greatly to the performance is working with other actors. And if you can work with a good receptive actor and a giving actor who's on the other side of the camera, then your performance benefits greatly. And working with Ewan has been exactly like that. What you notice with Ewan is his total involvement in everything that he does. He's completely involved, goes straight into it. That's what it's all about. I've still never met anyone like you, and he's so committed to what he does. He is such a physical performer. He works incredibly hard. He crafts his performances in a very professional manner, which is makes it much, much easier for a director to work with him. And I think Ewan is is right up there. I mean, he does exactly what Alec did on the first film, and he brings even something greater to the second trilogy. Remember, the Force will be with you. Always.